As much as I love on the SiteShared podcast to talk to, uh, I suppose, business entrepreneurs, specialists, experts in certain fields about um, tools, products, services, so on and so forth that are relevant to uh, trade organizations, I also love going back to the roots and talking to people that have achieved fantastic results uh, within their business and just talking a little bit about their journey so that we can make it relatable uh, to the majority of listeners out there. I know sometimes it's a little bit hard to grasp some of the success stories that we hear, but in today's podcast, you're gonna hear from a gentleman that's in our community. Uh, He's part of the Trading Mate Pro Business Coaching Program, and he has been able to 4X his business uh, since January, and it's currently July. It is achievable, and what we talk about today in this in this podcast and this um, video podcast is some of the transitions that he had to go through over the last 12, 18 months in order to help him get from where he was to where he is now from a business owner perspective. And he, Darren talks a lot about um, his transition from uh, being an electrician to a business owner and how he got there through um, coaching and education and just being receptive to, I suppose, understanding that, you know, as good as he is as an electrician, he's not always gonna correlate to being good in business. In fact, it will very rarely correlate to being good in business because you don't, they don't teach you this kind of stuff at college. So it, the onus is kind of on you to get out there and learn it. This is an absolutely fantastic podcast, guys, and it's from a guy who I know personally, I've been watching his success over the last 18 months, and he's just a real go-getter. He asks the right questions, he stays plugged in, and he's really accountable. For any of you guys out there that are listening to this and you want to know how you can get, I suppose, or see results, you know, like make it relatable for you guys that are in the trenches, this is the podcast that you wanna listen to or watch because um, Darren's done it, he's doing it, and um, he is absolutely, setting some some crazy track records here it's fantastic for you guys out there as well um, for the listeners to the site shed podcast and part of our site shed community uh, the folks over at Tradymate mate pro have got a very special offer where you can get access to the program effectively for nothing actually for the first month i think it is so if you head across to tradingmatepro.com.au forward slash shed and you'll be able to get the offer there and you can sign up it won't cost you anything and you can test the waters and i tell you guys this is the exact program that darren has been through in the last 18 months and now he's forexed his business so it's not bullshit it actually works you just need to get out there and work it so i know you'll enjoy this video podcast guys darren is an absolute legend and some of the things he talks about are absolutely paramount he's hit the nail on the head um, and i look forward to having you guys on the show in 18 months time to hear about how you, about your progress uh, if you haven't if you're not part of the community head across to facebook and join um, the private group uh, a lot of the conversations we have Uh, are in that community and Darren is also in there. So if you have any specific questions about any areas of the business that you want to talk about or any struggles that you might be having, uh, you don't have to listen to me. You can get in there and you can get information from people that are actually doing it. Um, It's extremely powerful. There's 5,000 global business owners in that group. Uh, We very heavily vet people that come into the group. We we refuse more people than we let in. (laughs) So um, it's a very highly targeted group there and you will have an extremely valuable journey when you're part of it. Part of it. Um, that's all for me. Enjoy this podcast. I know you'll love it. And again, if you want to get access to that program at our discount rate, you can head across to tradymatepro.com.au forward slash shed. I will put links to it within the show notes of this podcast, which will be the siteshed.com forward slash blog forward slash Darren. Go and check that out. Ciao. Today's podcast has been proudly brought to you by Trady Web Guys. Trady Web Guys work with tradespeople only on their websites and marketing solutions to help them stand out from their competition. Everything from web design through to SEO, search engine marketing, content creation, you name it guys. It is a customized solution for trade-based organizations and it's fantastic. Head across to tradywebguys.com.au forward slash apply, fill in the form and let's have a conversation giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Darren Hiscock, welcome to the Site Shed podcast. 
Thank you. All the way from Western Australia? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's uh, six o'clock over here or five past six. Six in the morning. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. yep. Early bird gets the worm. Yep. <laughs> um, so Darren, we've got you on the show today um, to talk a little bit about your journey. You're um, somebody that's been achieving some really good results lately and we have a segment on the SciShed called From A to B and it basically just tries to encapsulate, I suppose, the journey of uh, people that are out there in the trenches in order to make it a little bit more relatable to some of the listeners and viewers out there. As you know, you know we, we have some amazing guests on the show that have been, you know, achieved ridiculous results. And sometimes it's a little bit hard to fathom for a lot of the audience out there. So the point of these um, these podcasts is to really, I suppose, make it relatable and just to communicate, I suppose, to the masses out there that uh, it is achievable. And if you do take the right steps in the right direction, you can, as you have done, get um, results. <laughs> Um, so thank you for your time. I know you're busy. I know you're a family man as well, and you've uh, you've jumped out of bed early to to come on the show and I suppose communicate you know part of your journey. So we appreciate that very much, Lee. No pleasure. So I suppose primarily, just tell us a little bit about um, Hiscox Electrical. Um, obviously, you're from the UK and you've ended up over here. So I'd like to hear a little bit about I suppose your background and how you how you ended up on our shores. Um. So what was it? Twelve years ago now. I um. Back in England on a wet day. Um, <laughs> that's that's unusual, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's why it always is. Well, my sister came over backpacking. She went across the East Coast, Sydney, uh, up and down. She's a couple of years younger than me, my 21st birthday. Yeah. My mum had um, decided to send me to see my sister. I went over for six weeks to see her, and um, I loved the place so much. I said to her, that's it, I'm moving here. Wow. Um, probably two years after that, I was here. That's that's it. I don't know. It's um, it's not an exciting story, but I was young enough to have an adventure, so I did. And you were a Sparky back home. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. And I suppose yeah, that I mean, it, it's not an uncommon story. We typically find uh, when Australians travel, they always come home, and when the British travel, they always stay here. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go back. You'd have to drag me kicking and screaming. <laughs> so, so you're a family man now. Aren't you? You've got children and all the rest of it. I've got three kids and one on the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't like life. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, good. Well, I'm, I'm hoping to dive into a little bit about, um, I suppose, how eventually anyway, maybe not right this second, but you know, how your progression within your business has affected, affected your um, personal life and, um, I mean, I know sometimes there's that waterfall effect when things start happening within the company, you know, life in general starts to improve. So I'm looking forward to getting into that. But I suppose I, like before, I mean, to get started, let's talk a little bit about, get a bit of perspective on from a business point of view, you know, the transition over the last, I don't know, 12, 18 months from where you were to where you are now and mm -hmm. what that looks like. Just so some of the listeners out there, so we can cast a bit of a, I suppose, a bit of a framework for the people out there so they can understand where it's been or where, where you were, where you are now in terms of things like the staff, the type of clientele, the offering, the service, um, maybe something to do with if you want to reveal turnover, that kind of stuff, just to see where that's, where that's um, been and where it is now. Yeah, sure. So... Um, I've been in business four years, so not very long. Yep. Uh, and last year for about six, seven months, we um, did a large project over in South Australia. And before that, it was just me and an apprentice and just doing small domestic jobs, just anything I could get really. Nothing, um, we weren't niching down on anything or trying to. We were just, whatever work came in the door, we were, we were trying to do it. Um, and so uh, keep them busy. Not only my money, I'll be honest, and no, um, I didn't know what I was doing. It was just a case of getting the jobs done, coming home, seeing if I could fire up the invoices. And that was my plan. That's all I had. And then, like I say, we got kind of lucky. We got a, a fairly big job come through the door doing a, a camp over in South Australia. And suddenly, overnight, we had, I think it was 16 guys working for us, literally, overnight. And wow. yeah, went from working uh, 16, 17 hour days, just doing PowerPoint corner to doing 16 hour days, looking after 18 guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, complete change of business, obviously, you know, yeah. looking, suddenly just having staff and things. Uh, it was good though. I got regular money for once. Um, so that was nice. Um, and, but then the job had to come to an end around Christmas time and I knew it was coming to an end and I, I had a bit of money. 
finally. And um, so I thought after listening to your podcasts and um, looking at Facebook and you know doing everything I could to try and educate myself, I thought I need someone to help me with this. I'm not good at business. I don't know business. I know everyone says that as tradesmen, and, and I was typical, very typical. Um, so that's when I joined uh, TraderMate Pro and got some uh, some help for the business side of things. Yeah. And um, yeah, biggest change ever. Yeah. So what what are some of the? Um, we can talk a little bit about TradingMate Pro down in a little while, but I want to talk more about like from 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 the business point of view. <clears throat> what are some of the fundamental shifts that you've seen from? First of all, uh, clientele niching the type of jobs that you've been doing between then and now. Well, with some advice, it was um, I completely changed my focus. So when I came uh, back to WA from um, from working on the mines, I thought I'd be going back to just um, working for you know, doing PowerPoints for old ladies again <laughs> and uh, just meeting apprentices. It's it kind of I don't know how else to describe it. Just really completely changed the way I thought about things. I got off the tools a lot more. Mm. You know, Thought I wouldn't ever be able to afford that, but the moment I did, I ended up earning more money because I had a couple of guys out in the field. Yeah, um, and, and you it, could focus on bigger picture stuff. That's right. Yeah, and, and um, it, people started chasing me instead of me chasing them. I was able to answer the phone a lot more as well. I wasn't busy mm. on the tools as much, um, and I could go to client meetings. I could just go for the drop of a hat, and I niched down on on looking for business to business type work and. Um, so like I, commercial commercial maintenance sort of stuff? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, the moment I started to focus on that, I found it started to follow me in a way. It was, um, yeah, it was good. So that, that was a shift effectively, like from, a, from an offering perspective uh, from, you know, residential mums and dads to mm-hmm. uh, commercial maintenance fit out that kind of that kind of stuff is it okay cool yeah so yeah. now so where your clients were you know as you know mums and dads before now they're kind of more maybe building managers strata managers real estate is that sort of stuff or not really we haven't looked at real estate although we've got one real estate company who gives us regular work um it's been more sort of a project job small project okay. not been focusing on small project jobs but the uh, the jobs have been winning if we have. and so from a from a delivery perspective um, what does that mean? What has that meant for you and the team in terms of, you know, being able to, I suppose, uh, like, like deliver on your service? Like what's, what changes have been made there? Um, well, obviously with me not being on the tools quite so much, I've been able to manage the project to myself. A lot more okay. um, and I think that's been um, a big help and people have, other companies have actually seen that. We're not just a one man band anymore. There's only four of us admittedly, but I think um, we come across as more of a, company or a business you know where there's a few of us and because i'm a i'm in the office and there is an office person who answers the phone all of the time i think that, i don't know i think it just helps with the offering if that makes sense yeah no totally i, I know sometimes some a lot of the guys though they'll they'll sort of take a in my experience anyway they'll take a um like a residential uh, maintenance sort of mindset into mm-hmm. a commercial um project and just kills them yeah. and 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 probably more so the other way when you're taking a commercial mindset back into a residential maintenance uh, pro, uh, workspace, you know, like it really, it's chalk and cheese. It, it really is. Yeah. They're, they're almost different trades in a way. Um, but I did a lot of my, um, my trade back in England doing shop fitting and things. So I always knew right. I'd end up going back into that space because although it's hectic, I, I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose like fundamentally when you do move into that space, it really, I mean, you've already, you said it before, but it really does come down to project management, doesn't it? Like you kind yeah. of become more of a, more of a glorified box opener. <laughs> yeah. And you can't just go, oh, I'll sort out tomorrow. Wait, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. No, I mean, and you're accountable to other trades, you're accountable to deadlines, you're accountable to client, you know, requests, um, you know, modifications, so on and so forth. So you've got to be able to manage and facilitate those as part of the delivery, whereas with presidential maintenance, you don't really. No, and there's penalty clauses and things like that, as you, as you know. It's a lot more commercial. Right, li- liquefied damages and all these kind of things. Yeah. yeah, that's right. They're all very real. If you don't do a PowerPoint for Mr. Jones around the corner, it doesn't matter. Tomorrow will be all right. Yeah. So taking from like a team perspective where, you know, obviously that's quite a different skill set, as we've just spoken about, going from residential maintenance into a commercial space, um, what did that segue look like from from you and your your company? Sorry, what do you mean? 
like did you have to cull the team and put new people oh, on? Oh, I see. Or? Yeah, yeah, certainly. So we had um, whilst we were in Adelaide um, uh, doing our large job, we had uh, a couple of apprentices, no, an apprentice and an electrician over here, just keeping some of our regular customers going. Um, and then when we moved back over here, obviously all of the project guys left. But I had a good opportunity there because I could see a couple of the good guys. Um, and so that coal became a good way of getting rid of, say, some dead wood in a way. Mm. But it didn't really suit that the kind of work that we were just about to take on. Um, yeah. And uh, so I grabbed one of the apprentices. He was a third year over there. He's been a superstar. And um, the electrician who I had over here doing the work, he wanted to go and do mining. <laughs> so then I had to, suddenly I went from 14 people to none and quite a lot of work. So I had to look for new people. Um, and we started to use um, personality profiling for once. I didn't know what this is about. I'd heard about it. <laughs> I didn't really know what it was about. So um, yeah. uh, Travis, my business coach, helped me, uh, helped me go through it and understand it. And um, that's been really, that's changed things for yeah. us. Employing people using that is, I won't do it any other way now. But you know, it's, I, I mean, I, I did an entire podcast on this, um, but the, obviously, you know, uh, the great Peter Cox uh, leadership. Yeah. Ex- extraordinaire and he introduced me to personality profiling probably close to 15 years ago um, and it was one book that I read it was um, personality plus by a lady called Florence Litauer. I don't know if you've read that I'm sure you I haven't it's on oh, my okay. list okay and um, that book fundamentally changed my entire life and I and I'd, I'd say to this day I'm forever grateful to Pete for um, forcing it down my throat because <laughs> um, it and I did a podcast on it. I think I titled it something like "Understanding Why Why People Don't Like Me" or something. Like, I minute, think I yeah, I've listened to that one. That is one I've listened. To. The minute you can understand your strengths and weaknesses, it makes it so much easier to communicate with people out there who have different strengths and weaknesses, different personality types, different you know hot buttons, so on and so forth. So yeah, I mean, it's it, it, a lot of a lot of the listeners out there. If you haven't been through that process yet and there's a number of different variations on this it actually stems back from a um, ancient greek mythology but um since then you know there's been numerous different spins on it you've got disc profile you've got personality plus you've got all these kind of things it's all the same stuff effectively um but it's such an important exercise for you to go through and learn because once you understand yourself you'll be amazed you'll be absolutely blown away at for me anyway like the conversations i was having with people were always better because like I knew how who I was talking to the type of and, and you you can immediately once you get good at this you can immediately ascertain what type of personality somebody is and you can customize a conversation accordingly it's it's just it's mind blowing so I, I I absolutely encourage you guys out there and I should do a book review on that although I haven't read it in a while but I should go back and reread it but it's called Personality Plus that's by a lady called Florence Litauer don't ask me to spell Litauer because every time I do I cock it up but you can find it I'll put some links in the show notes. First and foremost, understanding your own strengths and weaknesses, then it enables you to um, understand the strengths and weaknesses of uh, people that you're bringing into your team. And this isn't like people sometimes think, in my experience, when they go through these tests, they think it's like a right or wrong answer thing, where it's really not. Like what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out how you can tailor a role or you can fit them into the right position within the company so that they're equipped and to deliver on that. For example, you don't want somebody in the, you know, in, in, in the organization who's highly analytical, you know, maybe working in a sales and marketing role or something like that, because they're more numbers focused, they'll be better off in the accounts or something like that, you know? And so small things like that, um, there's no real right or wrong with it. It's just to make it a matter of making sure that people have a good understanding of, you know, or when they're in this position, that's the right position for them because of X, Y, Z. So it's equipping them, right? So once you put them through that profiling process, were you then able to slot them into specific roles or tailor the job description around what their strengths and weaknesses might be? Is that yeah, how it works? And well, I I just sent out a, um, a job application for um, an, an advert, sorry, for um, an electrician. Yeah. And um, once I'd done that, I, I don't think um, Travis had known I'd done that. As soon as he knew I'd done that, he's like, "Right, you need to get onto personality profile." Um, yeah. I had hundreds of applicants. WA was. Oh, it is really the way quite quiet, but there's a lot of people hungry to work. So I was fortunate that I had a lot of applicants and over a hundred. Um, wow. and yeah, yeah. So it was difficult to whittle that down. Um, and before I always just looked at experiences. Okay. You've done the kind of work that I want to do. 
So uh, you'll probably be able to do it. Uh, and that's how I was looking at it. Um, and then Travis said to me to, uh, we use disk profiling. Yeah. He said, um, find your top, I think it was 20. He said, send out this, um, this questionnaire. And I looked through it and you couldn't fill it out. It didn't, it wasn't obvious, if that makes sense. You couldn't fill it out thinking, oh, I want to be an electrician working for Darren. I know how to fill this out. It didn't make sense. You just had to fill it out quickly. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I, I, he got me to fill it out with the, just find out who I am, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, I know I did it with all of the other staff that we had. There was only four of us then. So I, I did it with all of the staff we had um, and found out the role I wanted and got whoever had the closest to it. I, um, I then matched him with the, with the new applicant. Um, and like Travis quite rightly said, it's experience you can put in someone and skills you can put in someone, but changing their personality, that's damn near impossible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's true. And I think it's such a, it's like from a, from a business owner's perspective, it's amazing how often we will, like it's so easy for us to pass the blame and, and say, well, no, I just hired an idiot. No, they're all, you know, they, they sucked at what they did. When the reality oh, yeah. was you, you haven't recruited correctly, you haven't hired properly, you haven't trained properly, you haven't retrained, re, have retrained properly, therefore you haven't retained. And, um, you know, it's one of the things I wanted to talk to you a little bit about is your transition over the last, you know, 12, 18 months uh, with leadership and how, you know, as as leaders, we're always taught to look the truth head on. And sometimes that is not an easy pill to swallow. But, um, you know, if if for the benefit of the business and for the benefit of everyone that, you know, effectively becomes dependent on us as our staff and you know we've got mouth to feed and that kind of thing <clears throat> like it's in everyone's interest to do that so what's your leadership transition look like over the last 18 months that's certainly i've uh tried i've realized the fact that i'm the blame for everything uh, i was doing exactly what you just said i was your typical um trade in that regard if if someone was shit i presume that they were shit and it was nothing to do with me and um it wasn't my fault but you realize that um no it is you hired that person and um, if they're uncomfortable or unhappy or not being paid enough or whatever, that again, that's your fault because you hired that person. And yeah, from my point of view, being able to not be out on the tools as much or, or worrying about having to look after the, the clients as much, um, I can oversee everything. Um, it's been a lot easier to be able to talk to all, the, all of my individual staff um, and and try and get them to work together as a team. If that makes sense. How? What about... Like moving along from a from a numbers perspective, um, has there been a percentage increase in turnover? Has it? Yeah, like a big. Okay, that's great. Yeah, yeah, big big change, um, and we're quoting a lot bigger jobs now, um, and they're running a lot better. Um, so we're able to get through the jobs quicker, if that makes sense as well. So yeah, it's um, yeah, our turnover's increased. I think fourfold since wow. January. This year, yeah, it's um, it's Since been January. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, last year was a big year, but before I really base everything before last year because last year we had one job, right? And it's lucky, so right. going off of before that. Okay, and so I mean, with that come comes a whole new plethora of problems. Oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, you know. Sometimes the big, you know, the the only thing worse than growing slowly is growing quickly, <laughs> and understanding, I suppose, like very often when you go through that transition, um, and we've been in a similar situation ourselves, like doubling pretty much every year since the business has been around, um, mm-hmm. and I like understanding that, you know, in order to facilitate and maintain the growth within your company. My experience is the number one thing that like very often it's easy to go, okay, now I'm too busy doing this. I'm going to stop doing that. And sometimes that is the thing that got you to here. And in order to keep going from here to here, you need to keep doing this. And what my experience is things like reporting, coaching, um, mentorship, and just keeping keeping in a straight line there and keeping people having keep having people or having I suppose not necessarily people but having the tools available that can keep you on track is something that very often gets relegated in the list of importance when it should be prioritized and I imagine if you've turned you know been had a business that's gone fourfold in numbers since January that must be a reality for you yeah, it's made me, I always knew I was the bottleneck, if that makes sense. I always yeah. knew 
there was a problem um, with the business growing. Um, and getting bigger has only made that more apparent, if that makes sense. <laughs> it really has. Um, well, yeah. now, I'm the problem. Uh, if I could move out the way, if I could employ four of me, I could probably increase it another fourfold. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, and that's, you pretty much hit the nail on the head, you know, like problems and good and bad will scale with growth. So it's, it's, not, it's not a matter of, oh, great, the business is growing, everything's rosy. No, your problems go fourfold as well as your revenue, like it all, it all happens. Um, yeah. And you hear it all the time. And, you, and this is one of the reasons, so we've had a lot of, lot of guests on the show that have decided to, you know, scale back their business, business from, you know, these big companies to smaller again, go down because they just, you know, as I said, the problems increase as the company size increases and they just didn't want the stress and the headaches. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things there that need to be taken into consideration, I suppose, when you're talking about, um, you know, the growth and the projection of, of a company. Um, have is it something that's been managed manageable for you? Like being that you've got you've had good coaching, I suppose, and guidance. Have you been able to keep on top of it? Mostly, although um, I have had some very late nights um, just getting quotes back because they've got to get back in time. Yeah. So my my workload was already in my eyes too too much. Yeah. Then it to more, um, but I wouldn't have coped without the coaching. There's no doubt about. It. So. Let's talk a little bit about, um, I suppose, or get a bit of perspective on, from a lifestyle perspective, how uh, the segue within your business has changed as a result of you seeing, sorry, the segue in your lifestyle has changed as a result of seeing um, success within the business. Because we find sometimes that um, although money doesn't buy happiness, it certainly can help. And, you know, it can give you a bit of time back to spend with the family. You can reduce stress. Your health can increase attitude changes, like all sorts of stuff. So I'm interested to see um, from your opinion, you know, where you might have been back then, where you are now in terms of um, lifestyle. Well, I suppose an easy part is, uh, so my wife works full time and uh, she's been the one supporting our family, really. I've, I've, uh, the first couple of years, um, I was earning nothing, just, just enough just to well, not a lot less than my wage. I was earning a good wage before I started my business. And she's been really, really supportive. Really, really supportive. Thought I was crazy, but um, <laughs> she's been very supportive. Um, and so, uh, only really last year and, and this year uh, have I been able to actually um, help out with the household and actually pay some bills and things like that. And that's why she's uh, now she's pregnant. You know, we've got options now where um, we're not just relying on her wage anymore, and um, have another member of the family. So there's a big lifestyle change <laughs> <Don't I know. laughs> so, and that's given me confidence as well i'm not just running a business uh, it felt a bit like um i mean i was always trying and putting an effort and i always had confidence um but without seeing numbers and, and um money it felt more like a, a hobby that was taking too much of my time yeah and so I'm, I'm curious while we're on that like what are some of now the main now that you're you've t- you've made that transition um, pardon the cliche pun here, but you know, from um, say tradie to business owner, um, mm-hmm. what are some of your focuses on? Like, what what is it that you look at now within the business um, on a regular basis through reporting or whatever um, that really takes your focus on? What are you What are you absolutely fanatical about? Uh, getting more work through the door. That's okay most afraid of i feel i feel like i've built a bit of a monster in in regards of although we're not a big business it's increased a lot compared to what i was used to and that can if you that can shut off really quickly <laughs> if you're if i'm out on the tools and i'm not going to work and ringing right. people and potential clients yeah that's um that's my yeah probably my biggest focus right now but that's it's ever changing as i'm the only one um yeah. a lot and so getting work in the door can mean a number of things. It can mean um, I need to get work in the door because I need to keep my team busy. I need to get work in the door because um, I'm trying to hit a sales target um, or I need to get work in the door because now that I've niched down into a specific vertical, you know, I'm targeting more. There's less work out there that I want to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, what's that look like for you? Um, now, I mean, obviously we've hit, a lot of targets that we had set ourselves. Um, so it's not really about hitting targets as much as it's feeding the monster, feeding, keeping the guys busy. Yeah. Uh, 
beginning of the year we didn't have much work at all and i wanted to keep this team i had because they were so good yeah um and so now i'm just trying to keep them going keep them busy and so what are the strategies that you've used in order to um get some of that work being that you're more business to business these days than business to consumer chasing things a lot more i would uh, presume that someone wouldn't want me to keep calling them because I'd be bothering them, but I've, I've worked out that um, no, we're all just really, really busy, and a lot of the time, a phone call, unless they say, Can you bug off and stop bugging me? Mm. Um, you're actually being helpful, <laughs> you're, you're not bugging them. They're going, Oh, thank god for that. Yes, um, yeah, you're, you're starting that on Monday. Oh, shit. okay, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, chasing things that's, that's been a, a big thing for us. Just it feels like bugging, but it's not, it really isn't, yeah. And I suppose it's the right and the wrong way to go about it, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, if they say stop, stop. <laughs> yeah. But until they say stop, you just keep. <laughs> Kinda, yeah, yeah, dead in a friendly way, but yeah. How, by the way, you know that job I quoted up? It's supposed it's going to be starting soon. Yes, it is. You're right. Uh, I've got the PO for that uh, next Tuesday. Oh, right, okay. Cool. Yeah, right. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. They need some uh, Darren Hiscock project management by the sound of it. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Pull your hair out every night and just try and think of everything. <laughs> so I know you've had like quite a big um, attitude shift over the last, you know, 18 months or so. And you've gone from really, I won't say the, like the victim sort of mindset, but, you know, you've sort of gone from that whole, like, it's so hard, it's so hard to sort of now where you're at, where you're like, well, no, no, I'm, I'm in control. And I, I know, you know, like you see all this stuff come through um, the media and you see it on social media, all this garbage and you know, stuff about, oh, the economy's downturning, oh, blah, 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 this kind of crap. And I've always been of the, of the opinion where, you, you know, you create your own economy and um, you can buy into all that stuff if you want. And don't get me wrong, it's relevant to a degree, but I just, I, I never subscribe to it. I never have, I never will. Um, and I know you're very similar to that. So I'd like to hear about how it, how you now as, as Darren now what, what you would say to yourself you know back in 18 months ago that would change and make make these shifts um it, uh, oh, that's a good question I, I suppose it would be stop thinking of yourself as an electrician anymore that's something you used to do that's the expertise you've got behind you in order to be able to run an electrical business but educate yourself and becoming a business owner it's a completely completely different job yeah, yeah I, if anyone was to make this start, I'd say go and get some business schooling first because it's, it's a different job. It's, it's, a, it's a shame, isn't it? Like, I mean, I, I'm sure it was the same over in the UK, but I know here, I mean, I did a plumbing apprenticeship. So I know that, you know, throughout that apprenticeship, as, as great as the core, the program is, you know, basically at the end of it, you're in a position where you're like, okay, cool. Now you've completed your uh, skills training, whatever. Go, you can, here's your license, go run a business. But they don't actually teach you how to run a business. Like I think our business module training, uh, first of all, it was optional, <laughs> which is a joke. And second of all, I think it was maybe six months and they teach you things like how to run a business letter and how to, you know, address a envelope and just the most ridiculous crap. There's no, I, I feel like as much as the, 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 that business model is designed, an education model is designed to equip you to be good as good at trade, at your trade, it's also really quite detrimental in the space of being able to equip you to run a business. There's a lot of people out there that are extremely good at, you know, their trade, swing hammers, whatever, but, you know, it does, that, doesn't, that doesn't correlate to running a successful business by any measure whatsoever. No, not at all. And so, like, what were some of the, fundamental um, shifts for you when you made that change from being a, 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 a sparky to being a business owner? What were, what are the things you've like, you've really had to focus on? Um, future projections, instead of being reactive um, and um, just thinking, Oh shit, how am I going to cope with this? Or, Oh, I've got no work next week. Um, planning ahead, seeing what you've got, um, you know, in a few weeks time or a few months time, even it's um, that's been the biggest thing thinking ahead I was always just I'm most comfortable like most tradesmen out in the field swinging hammers I'm good at that I know I'm good at it. I'll go back to doing that and you can put so much work in front of me it doesn't matter I know what I'm doing though mm. I can I'll do that all day long no problem mm. I'll find myself when I'm uncomfortable going back to that if that makes sense I'll sit here and think oh I don't know what to do yeah. I'll remember Mrs Jones needs that job done and I'll run off and go and do it so um, but yeah but, sorry to answer your question looking Future planning, being less reactive and more proactive. I know um, Ed and Rebecca Plant and um, even Matt Jones from Cube Consulting, like they're so big on 
forecast and Mm -hmm. like vision, you know, like understanding, okay, well, if you want to get from, you know, if you want to be here, let's set that as the target and then reverse engineer it. Yeah. And that's, that's been, that's made some really, really big changes. Um, I mean, to, even to my business model, I mean, I've always kind of, I, I, like, I've been one of those people over the years, I've always, you know, oh, you got to write your goals down. Okay, write them down, stick them in a drawer and shut it, never see them again. And yeah. you know, in my experience, the difference between a goal and a wish is a strategy. It's, it's such an important, um, I suppose, element now for me where I allocate pretty much half a day a week to revisiting that strategy, um, looking at numbers, looking at profit and loss, all that kind of stuff. So that if you don't, like it won't get ahead of you because like, you know, in the past where I do it quarterly, (laughs) by the time you look at it, you go, it's been too long. I can't possibly shift this thing now. Like it's, you know, it's, it's such a massive thing to try and move. Whereas if you can do it incrementally, then you can really keep on track. So I suppose from my point of view, being able to take the big picture things and breaking it down into bite-sized chunks over, you know, monthly deliverables and then weekly deliverables to achieve the monthly deliverables and then daily tasks in order to hit your weekly, you know, all these kind of things. And it sounds like a grind, but it's been, it it has made a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. You you, you certainly have to. And I hate the idea of letting people down either. And I was finding if I wasn't planning ahead, I was either double booking myself or, or not turning up or forgetting about things and, that's the worst gut wrenching feeling when you when you've let someone down. So it's kind of I kind of got forced into it as well. Mm. Much better. I think as well, like and for the listeners and viewers out there, you know, like when you put a um, a target, we won't call it a a goal or a dream or whatever. When you have a target to hit and you reverse engineer that target, you'll be amazed at how simple um, it is actually is to achieve that target based off consistent deliverables and it's one thing that that, you know the cube the program the cube does really really well and for any of you guys out there that don't aren't familiar with that um it's 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 one of the backbone products um available through the trading mate pro platform um and actually which you got i'll talk a little bit about this and there'll be a link to this on the um on the show notes as well guys but if any listeners out there that are interested in um i suppose darren's story and achieving some of the results that darren's got um you can get a really good deal through the site shed and it's tradingmateprovit.com.au forward slash shed um you can head across there and you'll get some a special deal they've put together for just for you listeners and viewers out there uh but anyway the point of the conversation there is um you know that that, that program for me anyway it really helped me uh forecast get get some vision and then reverse engineer it and it keeps you accountable well it kept me accountable i don't know i'm yeah. guessing it does the same thing to you yeah, yeah, certainly it does. Yeah, you got you work out what your um, sales figures need to be in order to make um, make your business work. You know, just to even cover your overheads, yeah. and you month by month what um, what those figures need to be. And if you're not, if you're looking forward and you're not going to hit it, then you, you know you've got to change something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Take some of the stress away as well, because um, if you're hitting those targets, you know next month's okay. Right. Exactly right. And being able to say, okay, well, you know, if we need to do, you know, a hundred grand or whatever this month and being able to look back and say, well, okay, a hundred grand, that seems like a ridiculous number, but in reality, it's three of these, two of these, four of these, and three of these. So mm-hmm. let's just go and get them. And you know, it just breaks it down and makes it a lot more digestible. Yeah, it does. And it helps you focus as well. There's, um, you know what you need to hit and you know the jobs you need to do to be able to do it. So then you ring up those people that supply mm-hmm. that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a really good point, actually. It keeps you it keeps you on target. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what about things like? I mean, obviously, yeah, you, the, the business coaching has been a big shift for you. Are there any other um, influencers or influences that have um, been that have positively affected you, you know, throughout this journey? Uh, yeah, one particular book that I know it comes up a lot. A lot of people talk about it, um, but if you haven't read it, read it. Uh, the E Myth. Brilliant. Yep. Yeah, that's um. Michael you can't. It, yeah, yeah. You, I read it and it was kind of, kind of enlightening. I don't know how else to describe it. It, it um, yeah, it, it spoke to me directly. Is how I feel. Mm. Yeah, it's it is. And it's one of those books. I mean, I know Michael Gerber's constantly updating that book as well. So if you get a recent copy, you'll get the recent information. But it is. It's an absolutely fantastic book. I don't know a lot of the guys out there. Um, a lot of you listeners and viewers out there, you you don't read and and i get it like it is it does take time but i'm forever amazed at the amount of wisdom you can pull from a book 
And, and as a lot of you guys know, I, I have a book review channel now where I try and review a bunch of business books so I can give you guys heads up as to what you should and shouldn't be reading. But I mean, like being able to, being able to pull this much, you know, wisdom out of a book and for the listeners out there, I'm just going through a book that I recently read called Ask, but you know, I've got sticky notes and post-it notes and the book's riddled with highlighters like this. It's just insane how much you can get out of it. And I encourage you guys, I do, I really encourage you guys to get in that space. And now, of course, you've got audio books. So if you want to listen to books, you can listen to books. And there's books, there's podcasts, there's all these things out there, which it's just so rich, full of it, you know, information. It's, as Seth Godin says, you know, a book is an absolute steal. You know, if you get one good thing out of a book, then, you know, you know that, that could transform your entire life and your entire business. Um, so at the risk of sounding like a complete nerd, um, for all you people out there, go and read more books. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Audio books. I listen to a lot of audio books driving into work and things like that and podcasts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, a great way of uh, even um, any opportunity of listening to a book. I, I listen to a, quite a lot of audio books um, now and I find my biggest problem with listening to audio business books is I'll go and listen to them and then I'll have to go and buy the book because I want to go through and do my highlighting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I end yeah. up with an audio book. I end up with, a, which is not a bad thing, by the way. Um, I, I actually kind of enjoy having books around, but yeah, I find that I, I sort of do both when I when I listen to them. Are you, do you do a similar thing? I do, yeah. And I actually, I think it helps. It, it's kind of two different ways of absorbing the information. I think it speaks a bit better. So um, I don't actually mind doing it like that. Yeah. So... I suppose getting to getting to the end of our conversation now, I'd like to talk a little bit about the trajectory, what your goals are looking ahead. So what, what for, you know, for the business have you um, set goals for and what are you working towards? Uh, getting someone in the office, giving me a hand, um, recognizing the fact that I'm by far the biggest bottleneck that we have in this business. Um, and I need to relieve some of that stress here. So um, my next biggest goal is uh, right now, a job description and uh, getting someone in the office to give me a hand. And, what will, and, what, will they be, and what will they be relieving you of? Uh, some quotes in some uh, invoices. Certainly, I'm, I'm, I, that's one thing I keep falling behind on. Um, I've got to change my mindset around uh, and how important that is. Cash flow is so important. Yeah. Uh, and I, at the moment, I am keep focusing on getting more work. Really, I should be focusing on getting more cash. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, helping, helping relieve some of that and even making phone calls, like I said to you, you have to ring all of the time and chase work. It doesn't have to be me all of the time. So yeah, it's really just taking half of my load off of me, I suppose. One of the one of the big shifts that, that I've seen, positive shifts that I've seen, actually, it, it's pretty much dictated every single thing I've done since I've made this realization is how important. And I, I credit people like um, Al Levy, the Seven Power Contractor, you know, who who have really drilled this into me over the last couple of years through the conversations we've had. You know how important it is to have a organisational structure in place mm-hmm. because pretty much everything you, that you do from a business perspective will tie back to that. And it's got to the point now, like <clears throat> as you know, I run these events all over the world: ski and learn, surf and learn, and the Maldives, Japan, all these kind of things, and. It's the, it's the topic that I can constantly go back and t- teach on that is relevant to every single person in the room at multiple different levels across the board because it's something that it's, it's never completed. It's always a work in progress. And if you can understand that you know, every business is made up of departments and within those departments are roles and within those roles lie a list of responsibilities, once you have clarity on what those roles and responsibilities are within your departments, it puts you in a position where you can, at the moment where you're probably flying the flag across all those departments, you can really say, okay, well, this is the role within this department that's taking up a lot of my time. And these are the responsibilities that I'm delivering on within that role. This is what I want to outsource. And then when you put your job description together, like you're doing right now, You've got clear, clearly indicated job description based out of what you know needs to be done in order to for you to stop doing it, and it's just refreshing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's another one of my life goals. Well, not life goals, business goals, should I say? Um, is uh, the, come and do one of your ski and learns. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, since I started business, I've been listening to your podcast and I've seen that advert and thought, oh, I want to be able to do that. <laughs> one one day, one year, I'll do that. 
Oh, they're the best. They are the absolute best programs. They're the best thing you've ever done, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, but anyway, for any of you guys out there that, you know, you're, you're in that space like Darren, where you're like, I'd love to relieve some of the workload off myself. I cannot stress to you enough the importance of doing it in a way that ties back to organizational structure so you can understand your roles, responsibilities, and you're, you're recruiting for people specifically to what it is you want to remove from your own, remove off your own plate, or you want to remove off, you know, other staff members' plate. It's just so important. Yep, you sound like Trav. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly what he's saying to me. <laughs> um, okay, so cool. So, what would that mean to you if you know you can bring somebody in that can take that workload off? What would that mean to you from a, you know, from a personal point of view? Um, well, from a business point of view, it would mean I chase work harder because I have the opportunity to. It means I'd be able to quote and, and find new clients and and get people into my sales funnel. Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> uh, to me, that's the next biggest uh, biggest step I need to take to uh, make my business bigger. And I mean, respectful of the fact that you've got a baby on the way, I imagine there's a, a very large part of you that would, well, I don't imagine, I can tell you right now, <laughs> you're going to have to step back <laughs> from certain things. And yeah. And, and you want to as well. Like it's an important, you never get that time back when, you know, you've got a new baby and I know you've been there and done it. So what does that mean for you in order to um, spend more time with the family and how, how, how would you like that to look? What I'd really, really like, and I will get there, is, uh, is have a position where I've, I've got a job in my business, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I can start seven and finish at four or whatever it might be and actually have some structure. Um, I can say to my wife at four 30, I'll see you and, um, I'll help out. Um, and, uh, and even for myself, I can get to spend some time with my family at the moment. I'm just working every opportunity I can. It'd be great just to have a structure there where nah, this is what time you start work, what time you finish work when you shut the door, your work days over. I, I recorded a fantastic series, um, only last week actually with, uh, Marty Amos from the professional builder. <clears throat> and, um, he, was saying how you know it's so important to control your calendar and part of controlling your calendar is just that it's allocating time to um, things that are important to you and making sure that you stick to those things like I want to drop my kid to school I want to pick my kid up from school I want to take them for breakfast on the weekends all that kind of stuff like it, it, it it's always easy to fall back on doing things in the business, in my opinion. Like I'm like, well, I've got nothing to do. Uh, maybe I'll just go work on that spreadsheet or something like that. Whereas, you know, if you've got clearly defined, blocked out parts of your calendar, which, you know, you, you're sold out to, um, it's as important as, you know, reconciling your, your accounts, you know. Okay, I need to spend time looking at the gym because I want to keep my health. I want to keep healthy. I want to take my wife out for dinner, all this kind of stuff. So maybe that's something you might want to look at, you know, just allied time blocking, owning, owning your calendar and just selling out to it. I found that's been really helpful for me. Yeah, and everything's important, isn't it? It's, it's a matter of a lot of balls to juggle when you've got to, um, got to juggle them all. Don't just focus on your business or anything. Mm -hmm. Block out your calendar and you'll just you'll fill it with Disney stuff, I think. Exactly right. I mean, it's, I will. Yeah, no, you, you, you're spot on. And like everyone does this, I'm sure of it. You know, like it's just such an easy default to go, ah, oh, well, I need to go work on this because you do need to go work on it. But you know, you also need to do other things and you've got other responsibilities beyond your business. So mm -hmm. I've, I've, I think you'll, if I was you, what I'd be doing is when, you know, when you bring this new person on, okay, sure, this enables you to get out there and quote more, but, you know, setting a certain time within your calendar every month where you're going to be spending time on quote, or your week where you're going to be do, running, doing quotes, or you'll be following up quotes, that will then enable you to free up time where you can say, okay, well, after I do quotes, I'm going to take my wife out for lunch or, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's in the calendar, it exists, and she can see it, which will keep you accountable because it means, uh, hey, um, time for our lunch, isn't it, sweetheart? <laughs> so, it's a good idea. Yeah, 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 that's a very good idea. Um, so that, that may help. Um, but, mate, anyway, this has been fantastic. I'm really stoked that you, you know, just to be part of this journey with you, like it's been really, it's been great to watch you progress from where you were to where you are now and the constant parabolic curve that you're on is i think inspiring to say the least i love that your you know lifestyle's improving i love that the family's growing and all of these cool things that 
come as a result, I suppose, of you know seeing a healthy, happy business relationship going up. Um, is there anything in closing to the listeners out there that you know you'd like to recommend or suggest, or anything you'd like to leave behind before we close this episode down? Um, yeah, one of the biggest or best steps that I made um, was trade and make pro, but it doesn't necessarily have to be them, of course. But um, get some coaching. You win, we, we think we can do it because we're good electricians or plumbers or whatever it might be, but you're not. You go and get someone who, who is and get them to teach you and help you. Yeah, that's do that. Get coaching. That's been my biggest, biggest thing that I've done. Anyway, guys, if you want to go check out Darren, he's um, uh, hiscoxelectrical.com. <laughs> and he's admin at hiscoxelectrical.com if you want to send an email out. Uh, Darren's also in our Facebook community. So, of course, if you have any questions, um, he is always there contributing more than welcome to go and join the conversation over there. And if you're not there, you should be. Um, Darren, thanks again for your time, mate. Much appreciated. Um, okay. I, look, I look forward to having this conversation again in another 12 months to see where you're, where you're at <laughs> from when we spoke now to where you will be then. But it's been great, mate. So congratulations. I'm glad everything's going well. For the listeners out there, that's a wrap. Thank you for listening to another episode of Toolbox Talks. If you're liking what you hear, then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our Toolbox Talks. Uh, you'll get sent a weekly notification, which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week, along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades. If you're enjoying the show, you can head across to iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud where you can leave us a review. Uh, that would be fantastic, and all the reviews get read out in the show. Uh, likewise, if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the, the episodes that we create, then please go ahead and share it with them.